Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I am bringing you today's word for May 15, 2019. Uh, this is, I'm teaching a series entitled the, the Power of Fellowship, and this is part 13 of the series. The title of today's message is Don't Lose Your Joy. As you are walking with God and attempting to allow him to walk with you, what I don't want you to do is to lose your joy. And what I'm going to do today is just be be open and honest and transparent with you. I'm going to share my heart with you. Uh, and as I do, I pray that it, it becomes a blessing to you because I like to teach by precept and example. And so, yes, I teach you a lot of precepts and principles, uh, but I also need to give you some examples. I give you examples in scripture. I also give you examples in real life. And so I'm going to use myself as an example today. I, I, I really didn't know, you know, I've been teaching on learning how to be content for the last few days. And I thought I was going to move on from it, but the Holy Spirit wants me to continue to flow in this vein. I really believe that this is a message that is much needed in the body of Christ for today. So let's go back to what the Apostle Paul said in Philippians 4, verses 11 through 13. This is what he said. He said, I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstance. I know what it's like to be in need. I know what it's like to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in every situation, whether fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or living in want, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. The, the point there is that the Apostle Paul learned how to be content. He went through lots of challenges, uh, different times and seasons, levels and stages of his life. He faced fierce opposition. He was in and out of, of prison. Uh, he was beaten and stoned and shipwrecked and all of those things, but he learned to be content. And I just pray that you do it as well. And along the way, don't let the devil steal your joy. So that's what I'm going to deal with on today. I have uh, four things to share with you in this morning. I really believe that these four things will be a blessing to you. I want you to open up your heart now to receive what God is saying through me. You ready? I have four things. Here we go. Number one, as you walk with God and you attempt to truly fellowship with him, the key to this true intimacy with God is the same type of key that we, the, the key to intimacy with other people, right? The key to intimacy is transparency. God wants you to be open and transparent and vulnerable with him. And yeah, this is kind of weird, right? Because we're talking about God. And it's it's kind of weird because that God will want us to be transparent with him because he already knows us. He already know, he knows us better than we know ourselves. But God knowing you and then you opening up your heart to actually share your heart with God in full transparency, those are not the same thing. Yeah, he already knows you. Yes, of course, God has already searched your heart. And God knows your thoughts before you think them. God knows your, your words before you speak them. God knows your actions before you take them. But he still wants you to be open and honest with him. He wants your desire to be close to him, to be an act of your free will. God is not just going to force himself on you. God is not going to force himself to be close to you. No, he wants you to want him. And he wants your desire for intimacy to be an act of your free will. James said in James 4 and 8 that if we draw near to God, then God will draw near to us. It is in this level of intimacy and fellowship that God can help us to both see the future and be content with the present. And there's a balance there because God will reveal to you things about your future. And he wants you to get excited about those things. And he wants you to believe and receive them. And he wants you to think about them and contemplate. But he doesn't want those things to rob you of the joy of your present. You can see your future and be excited about it and be content with your present at the same time. And this is a balance because God wants us to always want more. Yes, but you got to balance this desire for wanting more with the requirement to be content with where we are right now. If we learn to strike this balance, we're gonna be at peace. If we don't learn how to strike this balance, then we run the risk of losing the joy of our salvation. Number two, this is where it gets personal. Um, I just wanna share my heart with you uh, because recently I, I'm teaching on, on learning to be content. Recently, I was not content. <laughs> so like most believers, um, there are things that I'm believing God for, right? Like I'm sure you have things that you're believing God for. There are things that I'm believing God for. And these are things that God has spoken to me uh, about myself. And so now I'm living in faith, fully expecting that those things shall come to pass 
in my life before I die. And so, but I also know that they're only going to come to pass at the right time. So the right thing at the wrong time becomes the wrong thing. There's a timing component to the promises of God. So you got to understand, you got to discern the timing of God as well. So there's one thing in particular that I've been believing God for for years, that I've been waiting on God for for years, that I know God spoke to me clearly about it. And I know that it is the will of God. And I actually believe that I'm currently living in the season where it shall come to pass. And because of that, you know, uh, I have to balance my, my heart's desire to see this thing come to pass with the daily responsibilities that I have. So every day, there are many facets to me, to me, just like there are many facets to you. So every day I have things to do, you know, as a father, as a husband, as a businessman, as a man of God. Every day, God sets me up with divine appointments uh, where he wants me to do certain things, where he wants me to say certain things. He sends people to me just to give them a kind word, a prophetic word, an encouraging word. And so God wants me to do these things and on a daily basis. God wants you to do things on a daily basis. And, and I have to balance all those things I have to do every day in the present, you know, walking with God, allowing God to walk with me, uh, ministering to my family, uh, being a husband to my wife and a father to my children, being responsible at work and in business, uh, being responsible in ministry. All of those things I have to do on a daily basis while at the same time I'm believing God, while at the same time I'm believing God to do things that haven't happened yet. Uh, but see, a few weeks ago, I'm just being totally honest and transparent with you. A few weeks ago, I found myself so consumed with what I know God has called me to do that I was discontent with my present state. And this is not a good place to be. So in my fellowship time with God, I was open and honest with him and transparent with him. And I let him know what I was struggling with. And so God made it clear to me that, listen, you know, he was in, he ministered to me directly. He also ministered to me through someone else that I love and respect and made it clear to me that I've done nothing wrong, that it's not like I've caused a delay, and that I just simply have to wait on this timing. It's just not the time yet. And, and I needed this reassurance. And being totally transparent, once again, I was having a hard time being content with my today because I was my mind and my heart was fixated on what I'm called to do in my tomorrow. And my desire for my tomorrow actually caused me to lose the joy of my today. And that's not a good place to be. So thankfully, God ministered to me. Thankfully, I got my joy back. Uh, but this is why you got to learn to be transparent with God. This is why I'm teaching on fellowship. This is why you got to learn to be content. This is why you got to have a level of in intimacy and vulnerability with God. Because if you're not honest with God, there will be times, listen, life is a long life. I mean, you got to do a lot, a lot of things. There are different times and seasons. Some seasons are harder than others. And so, so you're on this thing for, the, if you're in it for the long run, then you got to know that there are going to be times where, you, you know, you're not as high as other times. And in those times, be careful not to allow the devil to steal your joy. So it is in your intimacy with God that you'll get your joy back. You'll get your, your hope back. You'll get your desire back and you'll learn to be content in your present in your today, even while you're believing God for your tomorrow. So number three, don't allow comparison to cause you to lose the joy of who you are or where you are right now in life. And let me talk about this comparison thing, because it, it sometimes you're not even comparing yourself with other people. You're comparing yourself with your future self, like I was. I was discontent, not because I was comparing myself to anyone else. I was discontent because I was comparing who I am today with who I know I'm called to be in my tomorrow. And that caused me to lose the joy of who I am today. And and that and that's just, you know, it's ridiculous when I think about it because I'm a blessed man. I mean, I know there are people who would love to be in the situation that I'm in. I am a blessed man, but because I'm called to do something that I'm not walking in yet, I actually allow my desire for that to cause me to lose the joy of where I am today. And so, listen, if you're watching this video right now, you're saying, well, Rick, what, what does that have to do with me? I'm not you. Maybe I don't have this concept of what I'm called to be and all of that. And, and so this doesn't, no, no, it, it, it may apply. Let me explain. So I was comparing myself to my future self, but maybe you're, you're making the same mistake I made, but in a different way. Maybe you're comparing yourself to someone else. Maybe you're like, and I run into these people all, all the time. Maybe you're, you're, you're like the person that says, well, I'm not happy with where I am because I see my friends 
uh, I'm not married and they're married. And, and that really bothers me. Or uh, my friends have children and I don't have children. And that really bothers me. <laughs> or or uh, I see my friends getting their advanced degrees or my friends started their business or my friends did this and that and I haven't done it yet. And that really bothers me. And what happens is you, you, you fail to be content with where you are today because of what you perceive. And especially from a comparison perspective, you know, you got to be very careful not to delve into competitive jealousy. Um, but you got to be content with who you are. You're not them. Who says that you have to take their journey? Who says that you have to be on their timeline? You're called to be who you're called to be. And so you have to be content with who you are and where you are. It's okay to desire more. It's okay to want God's best. It's okay to want to maximize your purpose and potential while you're in the earth. But never get so caught up in tomorrow that you fail to enjoy your today. Please do not lose the joy of your salvation. So pursue God's best, but do so as you are content with who you are and where you are. God wants you to be able to look in the mirror and be happy with yourself. God wants you to be able to look in the mirror and love what you see while you are becoming the man or the woman that God has called you to be. So number four, and finally, I'll close. If you're not happy with where you are right now or who you are right now, then, then listen, I'm teaching on fellowship for a reason. Have a conversation with God today, like a real conversation. Share your heart with him. Be open, be honest, be transparent. Intimacy is developed in vulnerability. So be vulnerable with God. Yes, of course, he already knows everything, but he wants you to be honest with him. He wants you to open up your heart to him. And as you do, you will experience true fellowship. And through God's power, you can learn to be content so that, yes, you can believe God for tomorrow, but you can still have joy today. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to repeat after me now in faith from a believing heart. I want you to lift up your voice and say this. Say, Father, I thank you for loving me just as I am and for also loving me so much that you've called me to do great things. You love me in my present as you call me into my future. You know what you've called me to do. And you also know where I am today. You are not moved or phased by the mistakes that I've made along the way. The more I walk with you and the more I embrace your love and grace, the more I learn to love myself the way you love me. I open my heart to my future. I believe what you've called me to do. And I declare that I shall get it done before I die. But I refuse to allow my desire for my future to rob me of my joy in my present. I appreciate who I am right now. I look in the mirror and I love what I see. Because while I am pursuing your purpose, I have learned to be content. I declare this by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. This is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, I don't know why not, go to todaysword.org, click on the subscribe button. You're going get, to get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. Listen, head into this day right now, just determined to be content, to have joy, in your salvation, to be okay with who you are while you are pursuing, you know, becoming the man, the woman that God has called you to be. You got to appreciate your future, but never let it strip you of the joy of your present. Learn to be content. And then please, before you leave this, this screen, do me a favor. Share this message on your social media, on your timeline, and with your friends. Uh, if you're enjoying this, leave me a comment. Leave me a comment on YouTube. I love you and God loves you. Have an amazing day. God bless you.